And you kind of look at the first three things as the same thing, just being emphasized over and over again. In fact, you'll look at the translations and sometimes what is rahma is atf, what is mawadda is rahma. It mixes it all up. Love, mutual affection, care. We get the main premise of the hadith, but there's something very profound about the way that the Prophet ﷺ constructs the rights of the ummah upon us. First and foremost, he started off with al-mawadda. Tawaduhim. And when you talk about al-mawadda, mawadda means an active love. It's actually the highest level of the three things that the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning here. It means that you love someone in your heart and your deeds lend themselves consistently and actively to that love. And so you feel it and you're acting upon it and you are showing it in every way consistently. And so, for example, when the Prophet ﷺ says, Tahadu, Tahabu, give gifts to one another, and you will love one another more. That's a form of mawadda, that you love people so much that you're constantly looking out for your brother and sister and you're exchanging gifts with one another. And alhamdulillah, we're passing Eid, and Eid is a time that fosters that gift giving in the community. The Prophet ﷺ says, La tu'minu, you will not believe until you love one another. And shall I tell you something that if you were to do it, you would love one another? Spread salam amongst yourselves. Get used to saying salam amongst yourselves. When you see your brother and sister in the supermarket, even if you don't know who they are, say salam to them. Say salam to them in public. Say salam to them in private. Don't replace your salam with other forms of greeting one another. Increase your love with one another through salam. When you pray next to each other, I know social distancing, all that, right? But the Prophet ﷺ is saying not to leave gaps between you in non-COVID days. <laughs> not to leave gaps between you because it will increase the love between you. When you set up your lines for prayer, don't put gaps between you in normal days. Otherwise, the shaitan will foster division and gaps between you. So this is al-mawadda. This is love. It's ihsan. It's excellence. It's looking out for people. It's feeling joy and being a cause of joy for your ummah, for your brother or sister, who otherwise you would have no relationship to. Your brother or sister graduates, they get married, there's success of a group of people, success of an institution. There's mawadda that is at the institutional level as well, that we will support other institutions, we'll support other masajid, we'll support other collective efforts and be proud of them and lend our support to them because it's mawadda, it's a right of the believers upon the believers. So this is the highest level of the three that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. The ulama mentioned the ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّى Beautiful ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who believe and work deeds of righteousness, the most merciful will grant them al-wud. And that is a special affection from him to you and a special affection amongst yourselves for his sake. The highest level to aspire for. Ihsan amongst yourselves. The second one is tarahumihim, mercy. And we know that the presence of love is not always there in mercy. Sometimes you show mercy to someone you really don't like because there's a higher calling. There's something that is causing you to show mercy even in a situation where you feel a sense of haraj, where you feel a sense of hardship, constriction in the heart, but you still show mercy. It is forgiveness amongst ourselves. It is showing mercy when someone's name is brought up in your presence. It's showing mercy in regards to debts, when you loan someone money or when someone owns you. It's letting things go. All of that is a form of rahmah. It's mercy. And there's something very important about this, by the way, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man la yarham la yurham. Right? Whoever does not show mercy will not have mercy shown to them. Irhamu man fil ard, irhamukum man fil sama. So many hadith in this regard. Show mercy to those on the earth and the one in the heavens will show mercy upon you. It's very interesting about these two words is that they are also the, in, the most important ingredients of a, a good marriage too. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً ورحمة. The first two things the Prophet ﷺ mentions in this hadith about how an ummah functions are the first two ingredients 
the primary two ingredients of a good marriage. Why? Because in the beginning, it's all mawadda, or at least it looks like mawadda, the honeymoon phase. Right? We're in love. Then after that comes what? The first moment of tension. Are you going to be forgiving or not? Are you going to let things go? Are you going to always try to score points on your spouse? Are you going to try to win every argument? Is that the goal? Is it that now that there's tension, things are different? You show no mercy to that person that you have now been paired off with in the holiest type of bond that exists after the parent and the child? Now it's all out the window. Why? Because I don't love her anymore. I don't love him anymore. That was quick. It's only been two months. But the honeymoon phase wore off, right? All the romance has gone away and now it's like, wait a minute, now it's just arguments and everyone's trying to win the arguments. That's a problem. Now that doesn't mean that mawadda doesn't exist in a marriage. No, mawadda has to exist, but sometimes you need to activate rahmah and you need to strive to always be in a place of mawadda. And sometimes rahmah is that you are in a state of mawadda even when you're upset still gift giving, still being charitable with your words, still showing compassion, ihsan, excellence in your marriage at all times. So these are the first two ingredients that the Prophet ﷺ mentions. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentions ta'atuf, ta'atufihim. So this is a different word. This is sympathy. And I'm very intentionally using the word sympathy and not empathy here, even though empathy is greater than sympathy. But atf is actually at its root sympathy. That at the bare minimum, you feel bad, you hurt, you see others' pain, and it does something to you. It moves your heart. And the Prophet ﷺ often would start with the highest and go to the lowest. And this is from his manhaj وسلم, in teaching, his methodology. That he starts with the highest. So whoever amongst you sees an evil, فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ biyadi. Start with the highest, don't start with the lowest. Can you change it? Can you actually change it? Okay, if you can't change it, then say something about it. Okay, you can't say something about it, then at least hate it in your heart. So Al-Atf here is the lowest of the three, but it is important. And some of the scholars say something very beautiful. They say, Mawadda is suluk and shu'ur. It's both a feeling and an action. You feel mawadda inside of you. You love someone and you act in accordance with that love. There are deeds, charitable words, generous words, loving words, loving deeds that are emanating from you as a result of something in your heart. Rahmah, they say, is suluk. It's actually a methodology. It's that when the feeling is dissipated, you're still, in this, at least in the context of this hadith in particular, that you still show mercy. You still show forgiveness. You still overlook things. These are all forms of rahmah. So it's suluk. 